Welcome back y'all. It is IOD transfer time. I am so excited to be using these transfers on a couple of thrifted items that I picked up. I have been waiting for a while to try these transfers out. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the two pieces that I'm going to be using for these transfers are this um, beautifully done, I believe hand created like magazine brochure holder, and then a frame that I have picked up. Now, if you aren't sure what the transfers are, they're made by Iron Orchid Designs. I apologize about the glare. Um, they make all kinds of items. Um, I have only tried out the transfers. This is my first transfer try, and I have been waiting for the Botanis Journal for a while. This one is very popular and it sold, sells out, but it is gorgeous. It is so beautiful. Um, I got my hands on it a couple weeks ago, but I didn't want to rush into a project because I wanted to make sure that it was the right project. So I had that this brochure holder that I picked up probably four months ago, and I knew I wanted to turn it into like a key wallet holder, but I didn't have a vision for it, and that's not typical for me. Usually if I see something, I'm like, oh yeah, I can do this with it, and I know exactly what's going to happen. But this one did not, and so I held on to it, and now I know that this is why. The second thing would be this picture frame that I thrifted a couple weeks ago. It's, I mean, it's cute in its own way, but it's just not the style that I would go for. But it's a very nice frame. It's nice and sturdy. Um, it's got some good weight to it. So I like the quality of the frame. I just want to change up the design a bit. So to begin, like I do with all of my projects, I am going to be cleaning them up and removing all of the stickers. I am going to be taking the frame apart and kind of just redoing the entire thing. I had noticed when I picked it up that the back was not going to be easy to get out. However, I don't stray from the challenge too often, so I decided that I'm going to make it happen. I began by taking my metal ruler and putting it down in the slit and kind of prying up to kind of see what was going on in there. I noticed that there was a glue line around the edge, so I took a box cutter, put it right on in and wiggled it down in on that glue line, and then I cut that all the way around. This did take some work. Um, in this video, it's not going to look as difficult as it was because I'm going to speed it up for you. So if you find a frame like this, just know it's not going to be super easy, but it is possible. Um, this backing was stapled in, so just keep that in mind. Um, I am just taking my ruler and my box cutter and kind of wiggling it through to pry it open. I'm going slowly. I'm getting one side kind of moved up, going to the other and trying to do it. Um, at least one whole side at the same time. That way I'm not warping it or breaking it. And I just took my time and popped it out. And then I needed to remove all of the staples that were holding it in. So I just took some pliers They are, They bend off really easy, uh, but I also have like these little cheap wire cutters. And so I was just using those to kind of pull them out if they could come out all the way. And if not, then clip them off. And I got that all cleaned up. And then I took out the glass and started to kind of dismantle this whole thing. So the one problem that I knew I was gonna have is getting the wording and the phrase off of the mirror, as long, sorry, along with the lace that is framed in. So I pulled all of the lace off and then I took a window scraper, which if you don't know, it's just like a flat razor blade, and I scored the words in the, the lettering. So I just kind of like went over the entire thing a couple times. And then I got some acetone. In this case, I'm using fingernail polish remover because that's what I have on hand. I put it in a paper towel, got it really damp, um, not dripping, but damp. And I laid it flat and um, smoothed it down all over the, the side of the mirror with the lettering. I let that sit for 30 minutes and once I came back, it came off flawlessly. So I just took my scraper and scraped everything off really quick. I cleaned it up, um, got all of the little areas that may not have scraped off the first time. And then I pulled um, a, a little bit more of that, sorry, poured a little bit more of that acetone out. And I did the outside of the frame where the glue for the lace was. And it worked flawlessly for that too. So I just took it and scraped that off. And then the glass piece was ready to set aside and just be cleaned a little bit later before I put it all back together. So next I'm going to be working on the backing. 
Um, for the backing, I want to just make it a solid white. I'm just using acrylic paint for this and doing two coats. I'm going to go ahead and paint the frame around it too because I'm not positive how much of it you'll see since that lace was hiding a bunch of um, the stuff on the inside. So I'm just going to paint that up, set it aside. I'm going to paint the frame with a acrylic black. I did two coats of that. And then once that both of those are nice and dry, I took my sander and I just did a, um, a light sanding around the edges of the frame to bring some of that white from underneath back through because I want it to kind of match the white that will be um, in the back. And then I sealed all of it with a, a Nepali acrylic. Um, I use the Minwax polycrylic. I love it. Uh, it's fantastic. It dries quickly. Don't really have to worry about anything. So that's my suggestion for you. If I use a spray paint, I use Rust-Oleum 2X Clear, uh, clear Matte. Um, those are my two go-tos typically, so just if you're looking for a good sealer, those are my suggestions. Um, and as for now, the frame is done. So we're going to just set all of this aside and we're going to start in on the brochure holder. Now for this, it's beautifully carved, it's beautiful, just natural wood, and I wanted to keep it that way. I wanted this piece to be a little more primitive, so I just took some Waverly antiquing wax. I watered it down that way it's easier to slide on and it's not a super dark stain. I would paint it on and then wipe off any of the excess and I did that over the entire piece. I set that aside to let it dry and once it was ready I also sealed that in the poly acrylic um, just to give it a nice good set in. Wax is kind of a finisher but I like to just seal it in again because the wax you're supposed to reapply over time. So I just wanted to seal it in and not have to worry about that. All right, so now both pieces are ready for the IOD transfer. So IOD does have other products. They have transfers, they have like clay mold trays. They have all kinds of stuff and I will link in the description the um, website that I ordered mine from. I really liked their website because they had a full description list of everything you need to do for your project. So starting from how to prep it, what base coat to use, how to apply the transfer, tips for applying the transfer, what you need to seal it with, what's the best way to seal it, um, and just everything that you need right there written out. So if you aren't wanting to search around and look for a good video to show you what you need to be doing, it's a really great place to have all of the information right in front of you. And they even give you um, like products that are best to seal it with, not just, oh, use this type. No, they're say, hey, look, we've done this. These are the ones that work the, the best for this transfer to seal it in. So I really liked it. I uh, will link it in the description to show you where I ordered from. And then you can get all the information you need from there. And you can also see their other products that they have on there. So let's begin. Let's just look through these sheets. I was just looking through to decide which one I thought would be best for each project. Um kind of flipping through. I mean, just look how gorgeous these flowers are. I love that there's, you know, little other pops of life. There's birds, there's a dragonfly, there's a bee. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful. You can use it individually like I am here. You can cut it down like I am here, or you can piece it all together to make one big picture. So let me see, I'll show you here. All of four of them, I apologize about the light. All four of them line up to where you can make it one massive picture. So if you wanted to do a giant picture frame or an old window or the front of a dresser or anything like that, they line up perfectly to where you can put it all on there and have one big mural instead of individualized. So I think that's really cool how they do that. And I am going to start with the sunflower. Something about it was just speaking to me. That little dragonfly was so, so cute. And it's the perfect fit for my frame. So I carefully pull that out, make sure that you're keeping the backing on as long as possible. And then I was ready to kind of find the fit. So I just laid it over top of my backing and played around with where I wanted everything to hit. And then I was ready to cut it down. So I just took some scissors, make sure you're using good scissors. If you have doll scissors, it's going to kind of um, 
not cut as smoothly. You want to cut straight. That way when you lay things in, it can kind of help you have guidelines. And you also want to make sure it's not pulling around because if it, you have dull scissors and it's kind of like slipping and sliding, the backing in the front will kind of start to come apart. Your cuts won't be straight and you have a chance of ruining the transfer. So you want the backing to stay on completely until you are ready to pull it off. So I cut down and trimmed away the parts that I did not need. I set them aside just in case something didn't line up quite like I needed. I could just rub on the part that I did, but also kept the parts where I thought I might be able to use them for another project. For instance, on the right side of the sunflower, there are leaves and things that aren't really attached to that particular picture, but they go with the picture that I could set it next to. So I kept that in case I wanted to use that side of the other transfer at a different time. So I was ready and I lined up and everything's good. My polyacrylic's nice and dried and not, it's time to apply. Now, this is, like I said, this is my very first time. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what was going on here. So I put it down. You're supposed to start in one corner and work your way down that way. Um, as you're pushing air out, the transfer lays flat and there's no bubbling or anything or there's no like, it's not laying weird or anything. So I started in the top corner and then I wanted to go ahead and press my entire transfer to try to keep it in place and make sure it's all going where I want it to go before I really start in on it. And then I was ready to use the little scraper provided to start transferring it on. Now I will say you have to push much harder than you, as you assume to, at least for the materials that I'm using. Um, I feel like if it was glass or something, maybe not, but for this particular, I don't even know what this backing is. It's like the MDF board um, with a little bit of texture on it. So I had to push really hard. Now I did the entire transfer and then I started from the opposite side and it wasn't really sticking at first. Now I thought it was because maybe I messed up and I used acrylic paint and typically the people that I see doing this are using some type of chalk paint. I don't know why I used acrylic paint this time. I always use chalk paint, but I just felt like it. So, meh. So it wasn't really sticking. Now I've had that happen with vinyl before. So I was thinking that maybe it was a user error and I did something wrong. And so we'll what I do with my vinyl if it doesn't work is I take the um, backing and I fold it almost like completely back. That way it's a really sharp edge and it will release the, um, the vinyl. And so I was doing that with the transfer and it was working. And then I was just, <coughs> excuse me, and I was using my finger to kind of pat it down. Um, I did this for a while trying to figure out like how did I go so wrong? I did a lot of research. I'm not really sure. Well, I wasn't pushing hard enough. That was it. I just wasn't rubbing it on hard enough. So as I went through um, doing this, I was getting really frustrated. I was like, they make it look so easy. Well, it just wasn't pushing hard enough. So if yours is not sticking, if now there were some parts where I felt like I was seeing it peel a little bit. Um, so that could also have been part of the issue, but just push harder. You'll kind of see, it's hard to explain, but like the picture will kind of go like almost foggy or like it won't be as sharp because it's releasing from the transfer or, and from the top of it or whatever like the the panel that it's on I'm sorry my words are not here today but as it releases from that and it's not touching it, it it's a kind of it'll just be kind of cloudy because it's no longer sitting flat against it and you'll kind of be able to tell when it's released so just be really patient um, make sure you're getting in there, pushing really hard. Um, if you can't seem to get it, you can use your finger. It'll give you a little bit more pressure um, and control over where you're you're rubbing. And once I figured that out, things were smooth sailing from there. So I just got the rest of it off and pulled off the backing and it transferred beautifully. I think it's so pretty. I'm just very, very happy with it and so excited to finally get to try it out. Um, I am not going to be sealing this particular one because it will be encased in glass. So I just took the backing, um, sorry, the, the plastic piece that it was on, I took it and I used that to kind of rub it down just to make sure everything was adhered really nicely. Um, everything transferred fantastically. Like I said at the beginning, I thought it was 
me not painting something right but really it was just I wasn't pushing hard enough so all of that I didn't have to worry about that peeling off or anything it was on there nice and good so then I just put the frame back together so I cleaned my glass up with some Windex put it in there made sure that I didn't miss any places that need to be um, scraped or anything and then I used some E6000 I put it all along the edge um, like on the side not flat down because I didn't want it to be directly on the glass but I put it on the edge and then I slowly slipped the backing back in to the frame and so my goal for that was to have some E6000 on the edge but as I push it down it'll kind of meet the face of those of the frame on the backing and hopefully adhere the entire thing to where it won't come back out now it's not just going to fall back out by itself it's in there very very snug but that was just a little extra insurance for me to know that i'm giving a product that's not just going to fall apart so now i was ready to move on to the second piece which is the brochure holder um well key holder wallet holder now um and i knew that this is going to be a nice vertical piece so i wanted to find ones that would look really good on there and without losing a bunch of the image because the last thing you want to do is pay um the amount that you do for these transfers and then waste them so i found on the back page these beautiful pink flowers i love the little bumblebee so i very carefully cut out right past the back of the bumblebee and then I was laying it down, just kind of trying to figure out my alignment and how I wanted it to fall on top of here. Now, the problem with this is I wanted it to be complete in the back, not just on the part um, that doesn't have the little wood bucket at the bottom. Sorry, I don't know what to call that. So what I did was I lined it up there. I cut it and then I lined it up again and cut it down to where it would fit inside of that little box. That way I could transfer the first part, lay it down, line it up, and transfer the second part. So once I have everything trimmed down to size and laying the way I like it, I removed the back and began transferring again. Now this time I pressed hard to begin with and I didn't have any issue. It went so much faster. It went so much smoother. Um, again, this is a lot smoother than um, the other background that I was doing, so that probably does have something to do with it. Keep that in mind. But it is transferring absolutely flawlessly. It's so beautiful. So I did the first part. I, I got that off. The second part, I trimmed down a little bit more, uh, made sure that it lined up the best that I could get it, put it in there very carefully, and transferred that on, removed it. And I love, love, love this piece already. I don't even care. It's beautiful. I love it. Uh, all I have left to do is to seal this one in, especially since it's going to have keys and things banging up against it. So I used my polycrylic for this and you want to do thin layers. So I did a thin layer over top and made sure to let that dry. And then I added just these little like screw in hooks that I picked up from my local hardware store um, at the top so people could hold their keys. And this piece is done as well. So I would love to get some feedback from you guys. Have you tried IOD transfers? Do you have any tips for me? Like I said, this is my very first set. Um, I don't want to spend that kind of money and then ruin them. So just if you have anything for me, I would love to hear it. Um, let me know which one of these projects is your favorite. I honestly don't know. I think I love the key holder just because it's different. Um, but I really like both pieces. I think the images are absolutely gorgeous. I think that the IOD transfers are gorgeous. Um, it was really hard for me to narrow down which set I wanted. There's so many, but this is the one that I really liked and that was suggested to me um, actually by Julie's design and Designs and Signs. Um, she was like, this is the best one for beginners because you get a little of both. You get the the life like with the, the birds and the bees and the dragonflies, but you also get those beautiful flowers. So, um, like I said, I wanted to get my hands on it, but definitely go to the link in my description and check it out. Um, I'm not affiliated with them at all. That was just um, the best site that I found. So I found a couple others who did have these particular transfers, but you pay so much in shipping, it wasn't worth it. This was the best that I found for the price and for the shipping um, that comes with it. So just an FYI, I'm not sponsored by anybody or affiliated with anyone. I just wanted to share what was the best price for me to get to and they came immediately they came within like two days of me ordering them so 
Um, very, very, very happy with these transfers. I love both of these projects. Again, let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll try my best to answer or at least lead you to where you can get a good answer. So that is it for this video. I'm so excited about these projects. I love them. I'm going to be on the lookout to see what else I can throw some of these transfers on. If you enjoyed this video, if you think I did good on the projects, it's just for any reason, just give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It really helps my channel out. Consider subscribing if you're new here. I would love to have you here with us on our crafting journey. If you're returning, you already know. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm going to take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.